Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me tonight. I want to talk about Tabitha Brown retires her husband. And so let's get right on into it. Um, so what happened? Uh, Wendy Williams said that she did the same thing for her husband. And look what happened. Things fell apart. He cheated on her. I guess he had a baby or something. I don't know whatever happened. And uh, Wendy Williams was like, that wasn't the right thing for her to do, um, that it was going to you know, be a disaster. And several other people, however, weighed in and said that it wasn't the right thing to do because um, it emasculated him. So the title of this is emasculated or liberated because uh, people were saying that he, you know, he was emasculated by that because she was supposed to be, he's the man. In other words, he's the man and she shouldn't have had to retire him. So my thoughts, okay, I'm going to give you four points and then I want to talk about what I think about this situation. So first and foremost, Wendy Williams, your marriage may not have been founded on the same principles. OK, so just because something happened to you don't mean that it's going to happen to her. Let's let's be clear. Um, it may not have been founded on the same principles. And furthermore, OK, furthermore, why would you speak about another person's marriage that way? Why would you speak that into the atmosphere? We have to be very careful what we say, especially when we're in pain. And maybe she feels like she's over it. But there's no way that you got over 20, 30 years or however long she was married worth of uh, uh, what you've gone through uh, in, in, in such a short amount of time. So sometimes we have to hush when we're in pain because the mouth, you know, uh, let me let me tell you what I mean. When you're in pain, the way that you hear and the way that you see changes. Your vision goes first. So the way that you see things changes. When you're hurt, when your heart is hurt, you see with offensive eyes, okay? You hear with an offensive tone. You hear offensive. So you're listening for the offense. You're looking for the offense because you already wounded. And so it, it, it is really best that Wendy Williams not even speak on anybody's relationships right now until she gets healed because she's not going to see them the right way. She's not going to hear the right way. And I do understand that that's her business. I get it. That's the business that she's into, gossip and all of that. But it's not right to speak death to another person's situation because yours died. Okay. It's not right to speak death over her marriage. So pain changes the way that we see and hear things. And, you know, there are some things that Wendy Williams missed about this story. And I want to share them with you really quick. First of all, they moved to L.A. for Tabitha to become an actor. OK, so this is coming from Tabitha Brown's story. And they were broke. And her husband took a job. Yes, Tab called it out. Her husband took a job. OK, um, with the LAPD, one of the most dangerous cities <laughs> in the nation. He took that job and was at that job for 15 years. But their agreement was originally for five years. She told him, give me five years and I will bring you up out of there. Well, five years and passed, another five years and passed, and he go another five years. And he stayed there to take care of his family as a man should have done. OK, I don't know if he should have been there, but he definitely should have taken care of his family, according to what a man should have done. Now, um, 15 years later and 15 years worth of bulletproof vest suit ups. OK, he wasn't working uh, in a cushiony office. 15 years worth of bulletproof vest suit ups. You hear me? God blessed her vision to come to pass and she stuck to her promise. Now, I want to give you four points tonight and then I'm going to get out your way. So first and foremost, there are a few things from a relationship perspective that I want to talk about. And thank you guys for joining me. Number one, relationships are about purpose, not profits. Relationships are about purpose, not profits. OK, now purpose brings peace, power and profits. But here, hear me clearly. Relationships are not about uh, profits. They're about purpose. That's why we got to choose wisely. OK, and many of us do not choose for purpose. Many of us don't even choose for personality. Many of us don't even choose for peace. We want peace. But we don't choose for peace, which is why divorce is hot, because once we realize we can't get no peace with them, we want to move on to the next one. OK, because you're getting on my nerve. All right. But many of us choose for popularity, for profits, and for pretentious reasons. Then when that gets us nowhere, we're bitter and resentful. We're bitter and resentful. Yeah. 
So she pulled her husband from that job to do the thing that his heart desires, not to sit on the couch to play video games, not to be a bum, not to go frequent the nightclubs and all of that. She pulled her husband out of there to do what his heart desires. That's very important. It's very important. So let's move to number two. You can't say that you love someone if you are daily living your dream while they're daily living their nightmare. And you had the power to change it and don't. I'm going to say that again for the people in the back. Or as my TikTok family say, for the people under the stairs. You cannot say that you love someone if you are daily living the dream. The thing that you have, you know, you feel like you are created to do that is exhilarating to you. All these amazing things are happening for you. And you have the power to end the nightmare, but you let them keep on living it. Uh -uh, I call foul, flag on the play, flag on the play. How do you love someone when you know that they are daily living a nightmare while you daily living your dream and you don't have, you don't change it, but you got the power to? I call foul. I call foul. See, I don't know how he felt about the job personally, but just knowing that you got to wear a bulletproof vest and put your life on the line daily and by your own admission, that's not the thing that you, you feel God created you to do. It can't be a dream. It can't be. A, it, can't, it couldn't have been a dream. If it was, if it was, he wouldn't have left. You, you understand what I'm saying? By his own admission, that's not what he was. He felt like he was created to do. So every day he put that bulletproof vest on, not knowing if he was going to return home to his family. That's a nightmare. And so there's no way that you can live your dream and be twirling in front of this camera. Twirling in front of this camera, living your, living your best life. But he, he's living a nightmare. But you say you love him and you have the power to bring him up out of there and you don't. I call foul. I call foul. Do you understand that even let's, let's let me tell you something. Do you understand that even the most dedicated and supportive spouse would eventually resent you in those situations? How many days do you think he was going to keep on suiting up while she was twirling in front of that camera saying, hey, how y'all doing? He over there looking at her like, what you mean? How are we doing? Even the most supportive spouse would eventually begin to be resentful. Why? Because you live in a dream and I'm over here suiting up. Where's the love? Where's the support? What happened to the agreement we had? Remember, she's feeling exhilarating. She's, these are amazing things that are happening for her. She got a contract for seasoning that's getting ready to come out. She, she got, she got uh, some, some, some jobs acting lined up. She got checks coming from all different types of ways. Meanwhile, he going to risk his life every day. You can't say you love me and you have the power to change my situation and you don't. And you know my situation is terrible and life-threatening. We are... Not what we do once, we're what we repeatedly do. So you can't keep on saying you love me, but I see you never, ever, ever changing anything about me or you to make things better for us. You see what I'm saying? Someone said, I hate how sometimes folks take the human out of relationships. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so I, I hear me clearly. Even the even the most lovey dovey couple, after a while, somebody gonna look at somebody cock eyed because okay, look here now. I done been up here. I done went fifteen years, three times what you told me we was gonna do. And now you got checks on checks on checks, racks on racks on racks, as the kids say. And, and you ain't brought me up out of here yet. Come on now. Ain't no way mine would have kept going up in there if I could afford to bring him out of there. Because number one, I'm a woman of my word and I'm going to honor the agreement. And number two, if there was no agreement, I'm going to honor my husband. I'm going to honor my man, my king. I said, I love you. I said, I got you, baby. I got you, baby. I got us, baby. I got you and baby, I got us. Because ain't no way mine finna be up in there risking his life when I have the power to bring him up out of there to do the thing that he loves. Because remember what I told you. Remember what I told you, relationships are about purpose. Purpose comes with peace, power, and profits. Understand that when he come up out of there, he do the thing that he loves to do, guess what's gonna come? More money, more peace, more power. Ain't no way. Mine, ain't, mine wouldn't have been suiting up another day. 
unless he chose to. Now, if he chose to, baby, we got to have a conversation because now you're probably getting the best of you, which moves me to number three. We have to learn to take care of our men. We have to learn to take care of our men. We have to learn to take care of our men. Listen, her husband probably didn't and would have never said a word about that agreement. Do you think he came home and said, Tab, now look now, it's been five years. You suck at acting, so you got to do something else. You know, you got to do something else. She never said that he, he, he discouraged her. He just kept going to that place. He just kept going to that place and he kept providing for them and he kept bringing home them benefits and he kept doing it even though it was tough. It's been some tough times for police officers for a long time, not just the last couple of years. It's been a tough ride and he's been there 15 years. He probably didn't say a word. She said five years, he gave 15 and didn't discourage her. But this is why we have to stay in tune with our men. This is why we have to stay in tune. Because he probably wouldn't have said a thing. He probably would have did 30 if he could have. He probably would have did 30 if it was necessary. He wouldn't have said a word. But she knew. You have got to stay in tune with your men. You should know when he is happy. You should know when he is sad. You should know when he's discouraged. You should know. Not because you're a mind reader, but because we're one. How is it that you don't know you? How is it? She never took his choice. She simply offered him another one. And let him make the decision because he's still the man. No matter how much money he, she brought home, she's showing that he still is the man. Because I just offered him another option. I offered him the agreement. But we have got to stay in tune with our men because sometimes they pride get in the way and they won't say anything. But we're supposed to help them. And how can we be a help meet? Now, I believe in help meets. If you don't believe in it, that's OK. But I believe how you how are you going to be a helpmate? How can you be a help meet, help mate, whatever you want to call it? How when you don't understand what the current situation requires? How? How can we be helpmates when we don't know what the current situation requires because we didn't stay in tune? No, we're not mind readers. But sometimes they won't tell us. But in this instance, he shouldn't have had to tell her. You know why? Because they had an agreement. And like she said, he, he already had a nonprofit, but he couldn't focus fully on it because of the job. But he probably wasn't going to leave the job simply because he wanted to make sure they were straight. And she was telling him, we straight. We straight. Okay, we, we, we absolutely straight. Sometimes they won't tell us, though. So going back to Wendy Williams' statement, here's the thing. He already went first. See, let me tell you something. Many of us have a hard time going first and being there for the guy supporting him because, you know, he might dip after we done went first. And I understand because in a lot of cases, it does happen that way. We we, 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 we ride for them, we there for them, and then all of a sudden, when, when they get on, they like, okay, um, thanks. Okay, bye. I understand. I get it. I get it. I totally get it. But here's the thing. He went first. He rolled for her first. He went first. So, even if he does act a full-blown fool, he worked for 15 years at one of the most dangerous police departments ever while she pursued her dream. He already went first. Where is the danger in honoring your commitment? She ain't got nothing to lose. Nothing to lose. But as his wife, it is her job to help him as a helpmate, get to the next level because, again, relationships are about purpose and he deserves to feel the same freedom and the same peace that she's gotten from finding the thing that she was created to do too. See, it's amazing how we'll flip the script when it's a man. Oh, he don't deserve all that. Uh -uh. But when it's a woman, she deserves it all. See, if this was flip-flopped and it was an NBA player who had got drafted and had got millions, and he didn't honor his commitment, he'd be a dog. But here's Tabitha, who's got millions, and she honored her commitment and she's wrong and stupid. I call foul. And here's the thing. It's okay to take care of our men. 
Men is the operative word. Men. It is okay to take care of our men because take care of does not always mean financial. It doesn't. It doesn't. Take care of means provision and we can provide peace because they need it. We can provide respect because they require it. And we can provide the op option or the opportunity for them to be vulnerable because they need that too. Our men are carrying too much on their hearts. They're carrying too much. And if you are not with somebody that you feel deserve these things, then the million dollar question, sis, is why you with them? Why you with them? Because most men would rather you, you know, they would rather you give them respect and love any day. Most men would rather you give them, if they had to choose between respect and love, most men would rather have respect because they feel like love will come, but respect me first. So, so the million dollar question is, if you're not with a man that you feel deserves the opportunity to be vulnerable, who deserves peace or who deserves respect, the million dollar question, sis, is why are you with him? Why are you with him? So, so here's the thing. Stop choosing guys that you don't respect or can't respect. Stop choosing guys that you would not protect. Sometimes we have to protect our men from their own pride. OK, stop choosing men that you cannot protect. And I'm not talking about in a dark alley. I'm talking about from themselves. And, and, and sis, heal, heal so that you will welcome the opportunity for him to be vulnerable. So that you welcome the opportunity for him. You, you appreciate him being vulnerable to you. Heal so that you appreciate his vulnerability and not see it as a weakness. Because the only reason why you see it as a weakness is because you're in competition with him. See, when you're in competition for the top spot and somebody show weakness, you, you, you expose it. You expose it, don't you? Ah, look at them. They weak. Ah, they can't run as fast as me. Ah, they can't do it like me. And so when the man comes to you and he's vulnerable, when you have been in competition with him for that top spot, you throw that weakness back up in his face. You, 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 you call him a punk or you, you can no longer, you talk to him any kind of way. And I'm not talking about the one, I ain't talking about nobody who's crying every day. I ain't talking about that now. That, that's not what I'm talking about. But I'm talking about somebody who bears his soul to you. When you are healed, you appreciate a man who bears his soul to you because it gives you the opportunity to know how to help him. It keeps you in tune with him. But when you're in competition with that man, help me. Look, trust me when I tell you, when you are in competition with that man, you see his him being vulnerable as weakness and you expose it every opportunity that you get. And that's why we got to heal as women. And that's why we got to pick and choose wisely. Because let me tell you something, oftentimes we want our men to open up to us. Oftentimes we want our men to talk to us. And you know why they don't talk to us? Because they don't sense us being anything other than competition. And let me tell you something that men don't do. They don't expose themselves to competition. So if he sees you as competing with him for the top spot, he ain't going to talk to you and tell you nothing. If he stay. But, but hear me clearly. Hear me clearly. He ain't going to tell you nothing if you, he ain't going to tell you a thing. Nary a thing. Do you hear me? He's not going to tell you a thing if he senses that you are competition because men don't expose their flaws and weaknesses and vulnerabilities to competition. That's the reason why most of the guys won't talk to us. Most men won't talk to us because they see us as competition as opposed to somebody who loves. And definitely somebody who respects, because let me tell you something, respect and love when it is it's present, competition can't abide. Not in a relationship. It can't. Men do not confide in their competition. Many of them are carrying so much in their minds and hearts that they're ready to release, but they're only going to release when their heart feels it's safe. And when they believe that love abides and that love and, 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 and respect abides. Hear me clearly. He ain't finna talk to you if you his competition. He ain't finna talk to you if he got to be in competition with who the toughest, who the hardest, who the roughest. Uh-uh. He ain't finna be, he he not. So we have to heal so that we welcome the opportunity for them to be vulnerable so that we can be a better helpmate so that we know how to help him in the current situation. And we know what it requires, even when his even when his pride don't allow him to speak. It. So if it's a fight on who's the head, who's the hardest, and who's the toughest, getting him to release will be will most likely be harder than hugging an alligator without getting big. Trust me when I tell you. 
And let's move on to the last one for the night, number four. Many of the same people that were screaming that she emasculated him are the same people that was in the movie theaters back in 1996 yelling and screaming that Bernie was right when she burnt up her husband's clothes and waiting to exhale. And that's what I have a problem with. Because when they was talking about 11 years out of my life, besides the kids I have nothing to show, they were saying he did her wrong because he got on, he got on, and then left her for another woman. But not those same people opening up their mouths to say she emasculated him. No, 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 it's the same thing. It's just a gender change. And how dare we, the same people who hate, who hate uh, uh, double standards. We can't stand double standards because they always land in the favor of the man. How dare we now have a double standard? I'm calling foul, I call foul, I call foul. 11 years out of my life, how many of us sang that song, Mary J. Blige? We screamed that song because many of us could relate to it. And now that this woman has honored her husband, now that this woman has not forgotten the agreement, now that this woman has stuck to her word, now we want to say she emasculated him, cut it out. Cut it out because we were screaming for Bernie when she burnt up them clothes and burnt up that car and burnt up that stuff. We was happy. Good. Because he shed the laughter. Well, guess what? She should have honored her word. She should have honored her word. Many of us claim that we don't hold men down because they leave us after they do. And sometimes it's true, they do. But when a real one stays, we should applaud them. Whether it's a woman or a man, we should applaud, the, applaud a real one and not give them a hard time or not put our mouths on their relationships. Because let me tell you something, putting your mouth on a thing that's ordained by God is dangerous. Do you hear me? Putting your mouth on a thing that's ordained, or a couple, a person that's ordained by God is dangerous. It's dangerous. We have no business speaking ill of that woman and her husband, because at the end of the day, whatever they do in their house, don't do nothing in our. It don't affect ours at all. So why would you open up your mouth to say something negative about that woman retiring her husband? Because like she always say, because that's my business, baby. That's her business. Like so like that. OK, that's her business. Like so like that. At the end of the day, she, she didn't ask me for $50 to retire that man. So why is it that we have such strong? Why? We just hate and we just miserable. And many of us just need to get healed. And let me tell you what healing starts with. It starts with breaking curses and cutting ties. You won't get around it. You won't get around it. Breaking curses and cutting ties until you break the curses over your life and the things that you have come into agreement with. And until you cut the ties that have you bound to the thing that you swear you're trying to get away with, away from, believe me, you won't get healed. You won't. And it's too many of us trying to take shortcuts and shortcuts lead to setbacks. So I'm going to say it again for the people that's always in the back row, the back, back row, the back, back, back row. Until you cut the ties that have you tied to the thing and the person that you swear you're trying to get away from. And until you break the curses of the things that's over you, that's been spoken over you, that's been important into you, you will not heal. There's no way around it. You have to go through it. And it will be one of the best and most liberating things that you've done because it's going to help you see things differently. And it's going to help you hear things differently because right now, many of us are seeing through the eyes of offense and hearing with, with offense. So we're ready. We're ready to pop off, to go off, to go on. We, we bragging out here about being, we go from zero, I go from zero to 110 minutes. We are bragging about it. Our daughters are bragging about popping off and going off and all of that. And they beautiful girls and they shapely girls and they got all of this going on for them, but their attitudes are filthy, funky and foul. And as a result, don't nobody want to be bothered with them because we have poured into them and told them that it's all right to pop off. But the truth is, it's really our hearts aching. And we got to do something about this. Hear me clearly when I say this, ladies. Understand that Tabitha Brown's gestures were honorable. 
And if looking at that act alone, if we look at just that act, I'm not talking about that relationship because I ain't in that, but I'm talking about if you just look at that act alone, it's more likely that that act alone will keep their fire burning. That act alone, her liberating him, not emasculating him, but her liberating him to do the very thing that his heart desires will bring them closer. It will increase the loyalty. It will keep the fire burning because she ain't changed up on him like so many do. It will do that as opposed to bringing shame of emasculation. So again, I don't care how big a person's platform is that don't make them right. You hear me? I don't care how big a person's platform is. It does not make them right. And so at the end of the day, Wendy Williams is hurt. She's hurt bay. She's hurt bay right now. And unfortunately, she's using her platform to further, further spew out hurt because it's a lot of people that's going to eat from her plate. But hear me clearly that this is the reason why so many men are intimidated by women in power because they change up and start to compete with their men instead of honoring them. I don't care how much money I have. I, I cannot have a weak man because I have to have somebody who understands what I do and why. But but in return, in return, I will honor him. So I have to have somebody that I can respect. I can't respect weakness and foolishness. So I don't settle. I don't settle for it. I nip it in the bud quickly. When it comes to dating ladies, hire slow, fire fast. You hear me? Hire slow, fire fast. We don't deal with foolishness. We don't deal with nonsense. I don't let you put me on the shelf and save me for later. Uh-uh. Because I understand the call. I understand the purpose. And I have to have somebody who, un who understands it too. But in return for that, I will not be sitting around talking about I'm I-N-D-E. No, 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 no. Sure, I'm independent. But I'm not independent of my marriage. I'm not independent of my relationship. I'm not independent of my commitment. We have to understand what we're independent of. We have to understand what independence means when we merge with someone. And we have to make sure that we define it in a way that's conducive to both of us being honored in the relationship. And that's what I believe Ms. Tabitha Brown has done. So say what you will, disagree if you must, but hear me clearly when I say, we got to cut out the disorder and the, and, and the foolishness and keep our mouth off of God's people and their business, especially when we hurt Bay, we need to go somewhere and get healed and get some get some counseling and hush before we fool around and and they pray and send it back to us. Then what you gonna do? Because now the curse you spoke over them, they just they didn't pray and sent it back to you. Now you got to deal with the curse you spewed out of your mouth. See, some of us don't understand how this works, but instead of spewing hate, let us pray for them. Let us pray that, they're, that, that, that they, they work out instead of us spewing hate because we mad because ours didn't. So that's what I had to come and release today. That Tabitha Brown did what was honorable. And I truly believe that it was honorable in the sight of God. She honored her commitment. And I truly believe, truly believe that that will bring her and her husband closer together instead of emasculating him and tearing them apart. So if this has been good to you, I hope you share this. I love you guys so very much. We Yes, she is always giving God glory. Always, always giving God glory. And that is amazing to me, you know? And that's that's my thing too, is God, when they say my name, I'll say yours, okay? When they say my name, I'll say yours. But our daughters cannot continue to be beautiful on the outside. We take them to get their hair laid. They know how to get their hair laid. They know how to put them clothes on. But sugar baby, when they open up their mouth, all you hear is hurt bay. All you hear is hurt bay. Because daddy didn't hurt him, uh, first love didn't tow him out the frame, mama didn't disappointed him. So all you hear is hurt. Our daughters need to be just as beautiful inside as outside. And we need to invest in them healing just like we invest in them clothes. We Gucci and gold them down, but we never, ever really hold them down by getting them the healing that they need inside. So I love you. If Please share this because way too many of us are eating off the wrong plate. Don't forget to go to bit.ly forward slash ZM. Uh, link tree to get whatever you need. Okay. That's where all my resource, uh, my relationship resources are. I love you guys so very much. And I want you to have a great evening. Now you already know how on purpose. God bless you.